did that. So, uh, yesterday was the 100th anniversary uh, of uh, what we can consider the, uh, the, first, uh, the first movement uh, of the uh, First World War. And with that, Bill is going to give us a, a briefing on... Uh, uh, he said it's going to be a very short briefing, but he also brought dessert. So that, uh, that, that makes the briefing just a little bit longer. So I'm just say when. Okay. Let me pull this down. This is going to be a real short presentation. Uh, actually, uh, yesterday uh, marked the 100th anniversary of when the 1st Aero Squadron of the Aviation Section of the U.S. Army Signal Corps came to Fort Worth. Uh, go ahead and pop the next one. Uh, just a little background on the, uh, on the first. Um, in February of 1913, uh, President Taft ordered uh, the 2nd Army Division, which was stationed down at Fort Crockett and in Texas City, to get ready to mobilize for potentially going to the, uh, to the border. Uh, because Mexico had just started a revolution down there and there was some cross-border incursions into uh, some of the towns along there and so he got them activated uh, to get ready to go down there and at that point the uh, aviation section of the Signal Corps cobbled together eight airplanes and five pilots and 21 enlisted guys and sent them to Texas City and organized them as the first provisional aero squadron to also support the uh, the second division. Um, uh, but down here I've just got a list of it. They started out of course March 5th uh, when they were organized. Um, by November of 1913 they were in San Diego. It turned out that A, they weren't really ready to go support the army because uh, it was just a bunch of individual guys in airplanes. And so they went out to San Diego, but they did leave some airplanes here, uh, primarily in Brownsville, to uh, um, support border patrol activities. And in, uh, in July 1915, they moved to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, to conduct training with the uh, Field Artillery School up there. Um, and at that point, up to that point, all the moves that they had made, uh, of sending their airplanes to another another base was disassemble them and put them on rail cars. Um, this was the first time that they had moved from one base to another by actually flying the airplanes. I mean, they left Fort Sill on uh, November 19th, spent the night in Wichita Falls, came here on the, the 20th, uh, landed in a little place, go ahead, flip it, uh, in, uh, called John Ryan's Pasture south of downtown and spent two days here and uh, it was a big event. Um, this is just a brief slide of the kind of the airplanes that they were flying. Um, when they started out they basically had four of the Curtis biplanes which symboled, resembled the Wright Flyer and then f uh, four of these uh, Burgess H's which is kind of an ungainly looking piece of equipment and considering that was the combat strength of the Air Force. Uh, okay, next one. Anyway, um, the 1st Aero Squadron uh, was really the only organized aviation uh, group that we had. Um, and they had uh, a total of eight airplanes. There were 12 airplanes out in San Diego doing uh, uh, pilot training. Um, they left, like I said, they left uh, Fort Sill got to got to here and landed in John Ryan's pasture and then uh, spent two days here and there was a rather large celebration. It was about 3,000 people uh, when they landed and when they left uh, on November 22nd for Waco there was over 20,000 people. Um, John Ryan's pasture today is the Ryan Place neighborhood south of downtown. So. Uh, one of the things that they did have, uh, the city uh, Chamber of Commerce put on a, a, a banquet for them the first night that they were here and all of the speakers including Eamon Carter, Benny Keith and Captain Falloy, the commander, uh, all talked about the sad state of affairs of military aviation in this country. Next one. That's a, a unique airplane. Uh, it's number 53 and that was the newest airplane in the inventory when it it landed here. Uh, Carlton Chapman landed it 
It was the first military aircraft to come in here. Next one. Um, it's not a very good picture, but that's the encampment that they had. They just had the airplanes lined up. Uh, all of the ground support people came in by truck uh, with all the rest of the equipment, so uh, they could only fly as far as the trucks could go in one day. Next one. And that is a picture of the entire combat strength of the United States Air Force, November 20th, 1915. And the guy uh, third from left is Captain Benjamin Falloy, and this is full-size Benjamin. <laughs> As you can see, he was rather short. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's up like that. Okay, next one. Uh, this is just a little clipping out of the newspaper of photos of aviators leaving Fort Worth on Monday. And up in the upper left, the two people in the middle is Benjamin Falloy and Eamon Carter. Uh, he was... Uh, a real backer of aviation around here. Yeah, <laughs> filling it up. Okay. And I, this uh, kind of just wraps the whole thing up. Uh, at the banquet, uh, Captain Floyd's, these are his actual comments. And it just says, I started to work in the flying game in 1908 and set my heart upon making it my life's work. I was sent to San Antonio in 1909 with the only machine the United States government then possessed. I was to teach myself to fly and was allowed $150 a year for the upkeep of the machine, including repairs, new parts, and fuel. During that year, I spent $300 out of my own pocket. It is appalling to think that the entire aviation force of the United States Army is represented here tonight with but six aviators. A total of 53 aeroplanes have been bought uh, by the United States during the seven years that he'd been working with aviation. And he made a comment that more than that number are being built each day in Europe. And we have only 25 air, air pilots in the United States out of an army of 80,000 men. And two years almost to the day, we had hundreds of airplanes flying around Fort Worth from the three flying training fields that were built here in World War I. That's it.